and I'm, I'm sure you were taught the same way I was. Excuses are tools of incompetence. Which builds monuments of nothing. Else. Those who specialize in their use will, often, will never succeed in life. And seldom capable of anything else. Therefore, big brother. There are, are no excuses. That's what makes us our five. Just give you a good close part. This is Dr. Curry. This is Kobe Owens. Jay Street. And welcome to The Source. Brothers, let me just be straight with you. This has been an interesting week. According to uh, several sources, six teens shot in six days. What in the world is going on in the city of Wilmington? Yeah, you know, this is a very violent year so far. We've seen a spike in 2020, um, and we've seen it continue in 2021, tying um, a lot of the records, what, um, you know, when we have Murder Town USA or um, in 2017 under this administration. It's just out of control right now. Yeah. City's going to hell in the handbasket, and decision makers and people in positions of authority appear not to care. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at what's been online yesterday and today, you've got one, the article you just mentioned, 16 shot in six days. You got another article where the father's saying, he didn't expect to bury your child, but in Wilmington, that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And you got an article that came out this morning that says why the Wingo murder was overturned and it points directly to the detective involved going above and beyond what was in the search warrant searching the person who was convicted of the murder searching his phone mm -hmm. so now all that's going to be thrown out and if they have another trial it can't be used so in my opinion when you look at the three articles that appear in the news journal yesterday and today. And you go back to the things that we talked about at the NAACP press conference and the fact that you got a police officer uh, having sex in the car. You have another police officer who turned around and shot the, the teenager in the back and was arrested simply for tampering with evidence when in my opinion it's attempted murder and you got the situation with the young man in South Bridge head being slammed uh, into the wall it's just out of control you got 32 murders how many arrests mm. so it points to both the competence and the integrity of the police department and I have to reiterate this time for a change and if Unfortunately, if the mayor is going to sit idly by and he wants to be the mayor of the riverfront, he was already the mayor of the riverfront. He right. didn't have to run for that. He wants to be the mayor of the riverfront because right now it's about the only place in town that's safe. It's the only place in town where there haven't been any shootings. Then if that's all he's going to do, then he needs to just go on and resign and let Trippy be the mayor. Mm. Because... This just cannot continue. It's inexcusable. There's no 16 shot in, in, in six days. There's no statement coming out of the mayor's office. There's nothing said that we're going to do anything different. And, you know, Dwight L. Davis, director of the Motivational Center, community activist, he and I talk all the time. And I remember talking to him one morning in the summer. And I'm saying to him, you know, the city's cleaner than it's ever been. You know, <coughs> Mayor Pazicki has, has done a great job. The street cleaners are out. He's hired people who are, are assigned responsibility of cleaning up the streets every day. And the city's cleaner than it's ever been. Dwight said, yeah, that's true. 
except for the blood and the bullet casings that are all over the street. Mm-hmm. At which point, you know, it's hard to shut my mouth. I just had to shut up and be silent on the phone. But let me but, just, let me, I hear you, and, and, and that's true. It may be cleaner. I don't know that to be true, but that's what you, your assessment to, to that brother. But it appears to me that there, it, you, made a, you made several comments. It appears to me, Kobe, that there is no care for black and brown people out of the mayor's office. 100%. Look, um, the mayor was very quick to condemn uh, Councilwoman Darby when she made yes. a post about policing, mm-hmm. right? Put out a statement, called for the other council to come together to unify, to, to stand up against her. Mm-hmm. This weekend, there were six teens, and, and I, I want to read the ages. 14, 16, and two 17-year-olds were shot. Mm-hmm. They're all in stable condition now. Mm-hmm. Two 18-year-olds are dead. Mm. And you haven't heard a peep out of his office. And the question is why? Why? And for those of you who are listening to us, not 16, it was six teens, teenagers, who were shot in six days. Two are dead. And four are still hospitalized. Or they may not be at this point. And we have heard nothing from the mayor's office. We've heard nothing from city council. I asked the question, do the powers to be who governs this city care about black and brown people? Well, I was told that you are known by what you do and not what you say. And I've not heard anything, neither have I seen anything. When you said that there have been no press conference, there's been no press release, we checked as early as this morning. There has been none. Unacceptable. Well, right. but, but it's, it's a little worse than that. Because now the city's being run, and it's like a dictatorship. Because department heads are being told that do not respond to certain city council members Mm. that we have difficulty with. So if a constituent calls and says, there's a pothole in front of my house and the council person takes that call, well, if that council person calls it in to the appropriate department head, that council person is not gonna get a response. That's just an example. And I can um, tell you, they're doing that over our way. They're, they're trying to blacklist Linda Gray and Shanae Darby. Um, and that's the mayor's way because they didn't get their people into office. Mm-hmm. And that's their way of trying to make sure that when the next election come up, they're going to say, oh, your council person did nothing. No, you stonewalled them. And, you but, but, stopped them. But, from, but I will be very straight with you. They won't be able to do that. Right. Because we're going to make sure all of these shows are out. And starting today with the silent storm, we're going to show clearly how it is a system that has been designed and orchestrated for a specific group of individuals who just do not look like us. Right. Okay. Yep. Now, let, let, me go, let me go to something else. Okay. okay. Because today's article, well, it was in the article yesterday with the man talking about the fact that he um, never expected to bury his son mm-hmm. in Wilmington, that's the way it is. But it also says that he lived three blocks away from where it happened, and he wasn't notified until the next day. Well, the problem I have with that is another one of the murders last week, I was called, and the accusation was made that nobody from the police department contacted the the mother and that the mother I had to go to the police department the next day. The response I got was, well, no, that's not true. Um, we went to notify the mother and nobody was home, supposedly at two o'clock in the morning. Well, you got one person saying it, that's one thing. You got a second person saying it, well, what? it's all suspect. Mm-hmm. And so you've got all these shootings, you've got these murders, and no level of sensitivity to the point where somebody a parent, the closest uh, to Ken is not being notified. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, what the heck is that? But I think it's, it, it speaks to lack of care, lack of concern, and lack of compassion. Black people matter. And I've heard some of my colleagues who are African American like me telling me, well, if black lives matter, how come blacks are taking black lives? Based on the conditions that are around them, it's almost like a survival of the fittest. But I'm not going to excuse the fact of what's going on right now in our city with the administration. And the administration have not responded, which says there is no concern. Who cares? If this happened and, or, or was happening in any other community, if we start shooting up rivers, the, the riverfront, when I say we, I'm talking about African Americans, mm -hmm. you will see st state police coming in. You will see the, 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 the uh, what do you call that group, the military, the, the first part of them, the, the um, National, National Guard. Guards here. Because like you said, I think there is a special emphasis and priority placed on the riverfront because that's not black and brown people. And I also am concerned that people are being blackballed. Mm -hmm. They're being, and that's duly, not fair. Duly elected. So yes. Duly elected. And now department heads being told don't talk to them, don't communicate with them. Um, and I don't think any other mayor has attempted to, to just <laughs> exclude a, a duly elected city council person like that. It's, it's outrageous. But they would be concerned. It's, uh, it's unconscionable. And I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. What part of the city is safe? Yeah. Right. Okay. And, you know, our good kids are being held hostage mm -hmm. in their own homes, in their own community, because of the, the violence that's continuing to be allowed to go on. And again, you got 32 murders and how many arrests? All those 16s that got shot within six days, how many arrests? So how effective is the police department? Well, even if they get the arrest, they still do, they overdo things so that the arrest can be thrown out. Come, you can say something. Yeah, so, you know, a few things, right? You, you hear Chief Tracy talk about illegal guns on the street, and that's why... Um, you know, that's so important to them. And they had a record-breaking year in 2020, uh, getting all these guns off the street. It was still a record-breaking year for gun violence. Mm -hmm. This year has been a record-breaking year for gun violence. Um, you see time and time again, um, a fraction of council is throwing more money at the police, more money at the police to do their jobs. They can't even do their jobs with the resources they've had, mm -hmm. right? So now that we're seeing an increase in gun violence. They're not being able, they're not getting to the root cause of gun violence. They're not stopping the gun violence. They're not even being able to protect all portions of the city. If you look at where the mayor is allocating his police forces and where Chief Tracy is, it's not in the communities. They're not out on the street, walking down the streets, getting right. to know people over north side, um, over, you know, in certain areas. Now downtown, they have trikes, they oh, have yeah. bikes, they have cars, they have foot patrols, they, they're down at the riverfront. I've seen more officers per capita on the riverfront in downtown than I have anywhere else yeah, but, look, but, let, but let's look let's look at if you go up second street mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. between van buren and franklin you can see the gathering of people some of which appear to be dealing some of which appear to be addicted and in those two square blocks they're doing just what the hell they want to do all day and most of the night. I see it. Something is going to continue to happen in that area. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there has been a police presence, and it, two, three officers standing out there, and then all of a sudden they go away. If you go to 7th and West, and at the corner, next to the corner, the city, to its credit, bought the liquor store, shut it down, Put cops there at 7th and, and, and Washington. And on 7th and West, right around the corner, they're doing just what the hell they want to do mm. all day and most of the night. You see that gathering, no police presence. Right over here in South Bridge, mm -hmm. next to the fire station, in that park, mm -hmm. they're doing what the hell they want to do all day. It's already been the site of a mass shooting, mm -hmm. three females shot, 
and there was a heavy police presence. Same thing. Three cops standing up there the very next day. Parks cleared. The day after that, back to doing what the hell they want to do. But I, I want to add to that point. Just like you said on 7th and Washington, the officers sitting there and then on 7th, they just moved to 7th and West. Mm -hmm. Now, the officers out walking the neighborhood, that's, that's going to that. deter that. But that's not what they do. I don't care how many times Chief Tracy comes and gives a, a very well presented PowerPoint about his officers walking down the street. They go get some footage for 30 seconds and then get back in their car. Right, that's what he does. That's the strategy he's used in New York, in Chicago, and this is honestly why we should no longer have him as our chief of police because he has been a failure at leading our department. We've seen crime skyrocketed, and then you have people who sit back and, and just want to get he's exactly. High, high they want to throw more money employee. at him. They want to throw more money and raise his salary. Well, I will say this. Um, one of the things that when I, being a, a, a reared in Philadelphia, and we did not care too much for Frank Rizzo, but what he decided to do in order to help with the community effort, uh, and it's weird I'm bringing his name up out, because that was years ago, is that he decided to drop the police officers off in the neighborhood. They didn't drive to the neighborhood and sit in their cars. He dropped them off. If you're in the 22nd district, you're in the 23rd district, you're in whatever district it was, you, 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 are, you, you dropped the police officers off and they became a part of the community. Something has to happen. A strategic plan has to happen. But there's, in no, order for there's, there's, no, no, there's no plan and that's but, what's so exasperating to me. Yes. Okay. The fact that the mayor mm -hmm. and the governor mm -hmm. were a major part of the Hope Commission plan, the original plan, mm -hmm. was never funded. Mm -hmm. I come back in March and... I put a motion in front of, of county council to say we need to have a plan of which Matt Meyer has started, at, at, at least a plan that includes cleaning up the community, a prevention, intervention component, at least in the Rosegate area and the Edgemore Gardens area. Invited the city to participate, nothing from the city. Okay, you don't want to work with us, that's fine. What have you done on your own? Where, where are your intervention initiatives? Where, where are you doing to the, the young people who are not involved in crime? What are we doing to see to it they don't get involved? Where's the deterrent? None of those things are in place. Mm -hmm. And you're not locking anybody up. You're not locking anybody up because the street's not talking to you. The street's not talking to you because your whole concept of community policing is a hoax. Mm. Well, and every time you say community policing, it's fake news. Yeah, well, that, I was going to say, I think a lot of, lot, of, lot of the playbook is out of Trump. And it's like you act like you throw them a fish sandwich and, and, and that's all they need because they have bought off some of our leaders. But as you know, and I'm, I'm sure you were taught the same way I was, excuses are tools of incompetence. Which builds monuments of nothing. Else. Those who specialize in their use will, often, will never succeed in life. And seldom capable of anything else. Therefore, big brother. There Girl, are no excuses. That's what makes us our fire. Just gave you a good pledge process real quickly. We're going to come back in a second, but before we go, let me just say this to you. I'm going to personally extend an invitation to the next show. I, I can't promise this person will show up, but I'm going to call the News Journal. And one of my concerns right now is that y'all hear us, but the major paper of our state is the News Journal. There, there's someone in the mayor's office who have always been watching and, and making sure that whether it was that person was in charge of Theo Gregory, whether that person was in charge of this mayor or other people that the news journal never cover true hardcore um, news. We want to bring that person on and I'm going to be I'm not going to say any names over the, the air and let them respond to our community. Our community want to know how come they are not reporting this putting the pressure on the mayor's office to either fire people who are incompetent or resign himself. We'll be right back. And we're back. Listen, we uh, certainly J Street had to make a run so he was not able to stay with us for this section of, or this segment of our show. But we want to now move to the silent storm uh, section of our show and we promised you that we were going to give you substance and we were going to give you facts. Um, it's really interesting how for decades how city council have run and there were people I disagreed with but they were the president of the city council so we had to follow what they do. Um, Trippy is a very very good person and we do like him as an individual. He's done well uh, but 
I don't want anybody to fall into the tra trap that has been put up for him. Um, the, the, the whole notion of him being, his power being stripped from him is true. And it was done at the hands of strategic planning on behalf of those individuals who are the hidden hand people who run the city. I'm very concerned about Loretta Walsh. I'm saying this because I know that no way in the world all of this could have gotten done by a freshman whose name is on the legislation that has been put forward. The freshman Johnson, Chris Johnson, uh, have certainly put up some legislation, but it was all strategically done. Normally, the president of the city council is in charge of four different appointments. He appoints the committee chairs, or she. Uh, they appoint the rules for the council to come. They also appoint the pro temp. And finally, the staff for operating city council. Um, Trippy didn't get that pleasure to do that. Um, meetings were happening behind his back and they came together, the seven, the infamous group, the group that supports all of the, I guess we can almost say the murdering and everything else in the city, but they came together and they stripped him and included in those who stripped him was Hanifa Shabazz who moved back into our community so she can run and win city council president, but she ended up um, losing to Trippy, and it is the city council former president who selects the agenda to set all the rules and, and, and resolutions that are to be voted upon. And I just want to make it clear as we go through this, the reason why some things could not even be overturned is because once you vote something in as a legislation, then it is at that point, it is law for the city, and the only way you can overturn it is that you have nine. Yes, two-thirds. And at this point, he didn't even have seven. He had six. So what I want to make sure we do today, and Kobe, we're going to act as if I know nothing Mm -hmm. But I'll ask certain questions so that our viewing audience can get a better understanding. And we open the door for any person on city council or the mayor's office to come join us. We are open invitation. We want you here. But what we will not tolerate is lies. Bring your facts and we will present it to the community. The only voice this community have in a lot of cases, is what is being given to them because we don't get the support from the major media outlet that's here in the state of Delaware. And I'm getting concerned about that. But for right now, we're going to keep things in order. Let's talk about whether or not my comment was correct. Who set the agenda yes. for the 100th and I think it's the 108th, 108th session? Yes. So the uh, whoever is the presiding officer of the council before okay. um, is the one who sets the agenda. And they do it like that because you actually are not in charge. So the person who's elected, right, whether it's an outside person or another council member, they are not sworn into the position of presiding officer, a.k.a. the president, until that actual meeting. Mm -hmm. So the agenda has to be publicized seven days prior for the public to um, follow our FOIA laws here in Delaware. So therefore, that person of the previous council is the one who sets the agenda. All right, let's stop there because mm -hmm. I have my seniors who are listening and they want to follow this. Yes. So that means when Theo Gregory became city council president, yes. before he was sworn into office, his predecessor, Norman yes. Griffith, yes. did the agenda. Yes. When um, Hanifa Shabazz became the president of city council, um, then it was Theo. Uh, Theo Gregory who set the agenda. Mm -hmm. So when Trippy became president of city council, it was Hanifa Shabazz right. who set the agenda. Right. Which, go, go ahead. And yeah, so um, the only time it wasn't a change was under um, Ted Blunt. 
So Ted was elected to city council. He was reelected as city council president. We haven't elected someone to city council president in consecutive terms in a while in the last four terms, right? Okay. Um, so Ted, he set the agenda right. for himself. That's why I did right? what I did. But mm -hmm. when he first became council mm -hmm. president, um, Jim Baker, who had been elected right. mayor, right. set the agenda for him mm -hmm. when he first took over. All right. Um, so that we, we are very clear. It is the previous president of city council. Correct. Which will make my hypothesis correct. And that is, Hanifa was in with this whole scheme. Yes. Because how the, the agenda ha was set was to ensure that all of Chris Johnson, who is a city council person, um, I believe he is in the seventh yes. district, that's not represented by our people. But in order for Chris Johnson's uh, agenda with all of those people behind the scenes, working it up and tearing Trippy's power away from him, it had to be approved by Hanifa Shabazz. Yes. I give you that piece of inf information because there may be a, a desire for another run. And I want to make sure we be clear on what's happening. I told you you should not have waken up the sleeping giant. Moving from that, mm -hmm. I want to go to rules. Yes. That's the first item on the agenda. Mm -hmm. They voted on the rules. The rules were presented by Chris Johnson. No. There uh, resolution 0001 okay. was introduced by Trippy Congo. Okay, very Resolution good. 0004 uh -huh. was introduced by Councilman um, Chris Johnson. Mm -hmm. So you had two competing sets of rules. Okay, thank you. Um, and rules is usually the first to go because that sets the tone for the entire council for the next four years. Now, mm -hmm. rules can be changed, like you said, um, with nine votes or known as a two-thirds vote mm -hmm. of the full council. So if there is less than 13 members, that number may change, right, mm -hmm. um, to amend the rules. Those rules say th certain things like um, how the conduct of the city council will be handled, whether it's hiring staff, mm -hmm. um, whether it's who sets the agenda, and things like that. Um, so the key components and the two differences between council president, who was duly elected president's um, rules, and Chris Johnson's rule was who sets the agenda. So in Trippy's agenda, or council president Congo, just like every other council president, uh -huh. they're the ones who set the agenda. That's a part of being a presiding officer mm -hmm. of any, whether it's a board, mm -hmm. um, That's right. organization whatsoever. Whoever is the chair president mm -hmm. sets the agenda for the meetings. That's a part of their rules and presides over the meeting. In Chris Johnson's version, they took that power away from the council president mm -hmm. um, and they gave it to, at the time, the uh, city clerk. Right. Um, after, I think it was three meetings, yeah. um, and they had to amend further, the rules. Before you go any further, notice they took that power away and they gave it to, according to the resolution, to the clerk. Yes. Obviously, she was not enough of a team player. It was, I'm not saying that it's a fact. I'm not saying that's a fact. I'm saying obvious based off of what I'm paying attention to. Then after about three meetings, mm -hmm. there was an amendment. Correct. Speak from there. And that amendment then took the power from the city clerk and gave it to the chief of staff. Okay. So now the chief of staff sets the agenda. Um, for the council meeting. Now, how many president. votes did they need to, in order to do the amendment? Nine. They needed nine. So there was two extras given yeah. to that one. Now, let me go back to this resolution, okay? Set the agenda, mm -hmm. okay? Or, or, the, or the rules for the council. Mm -hmm. How, what was the vote for um, trip, who's went, who's went up first? Who? Who, um, who, whose resolution went first? I know, I know the answer, yeah. but I'm just making sure my audience yeah. know. Um, so they go in order, a numerical number. So Trippy's rules went first. Okay. Uh, Pre Council President Congo. Yes, and no disrespect to Councilman, yeah. um, our no, Council sorry. President Tri uh, Trippy Congo. We know you as Trippy, and, and that's the only reason why we're saying it the way we're saying it. Um, his so rules went first. His, okay, according to, they already got their plan together. Yes. His rules went first. What was the outcome of his rules, the vote number? It was six to seven. All right, could you tell me, and we're gonna put the pictures up of these six people who voted to continue to, uh, so Mr. So, so President Trippi could, could, um, could um, 
uh, 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 govern appropriately as president of city council. Could you tell me who those six people who supported that yes. resolution? So Council President Congo, um, Councilwoman Gray, Councilwoman Darby, Councilwoman Harley, Councilwoman McCoy, and Councilwoman Ditson. Okay, just for the record, we talk fast. These six individuals said, you know what, we, we have given everybody else a chance to govern. Let's give Trippy Congo an opportunity to show the people voted them in. Let's give him a chance. Uh, Trippy voted in favor of it. Uh, Gray. We have Darby, who's from the second district. We have Gray from the first district. We have Harley from the fourth district. We have McCoy from the sixth district. And we have Dixon from the at large seat. Well, it failed. Yes. Immediately, we have, because they know it was going to fail, right. we know our seven. Could you tell, could you share with me um, what Johnson's resolution was about? Yeah, so again, like I said, the key was changing who had the power to set the agenda um, and also changing um, how staff is hired, right? Mm -hmm. So it has always been at the discretion of after the first organization meeting, so after this meeting, where they vote on staff. And they've done it different ways. They vote as on staff as a slate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they voted on staff individually for each individual position. Ch staff size has changed, mm -hmm. right? So they've had only maybe four people. They've had um, as big as 12 people under staff. You have WITN that's included as well, too. Um, you have whether or not there you have an in-house attorney or not. Or do they get one from the law office who's under the mayor's office? Um, so th staff has always changed. The position, the mm -hmm. titles change based on the council president, mm -hmm. whatever they want the titles to be mm -hmm. and positions they think um, would be best to help not only themselves but the entire city to make sure council's on top of things. Mm -hmm. um, so um, when that resolution went through, what it does is it goes to you know more interviews through the personnel committee, um, and then recommendations from the personnel committee to the whole council to vote on for approval. Um, now, there's has traditionally been votes um, when there's when you're adding a position mm -hmm. um, so that you can allocate the proper money to it. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to actually hiring a person into that role, that is something that usually wasn't voting on for the full council after that. Because these are, you're appointed at the pleasure of the president and serve at the pleasure of the president. Just like with any governmental role, right, um, right. You're, you're usually there with the presiding officer. Even though you may work for someone else, mm -hmm. you're there on behalf and at the pleasure of the presiding officer. You look at the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. So cabinet secretaries, they do their own work, right? Mm -hmm. But they're there at the pleasure of the president. So what they have taken from Con uh, Councilman Congo, what they, what they took from him was his power to appoint people who he feel can g help get the agenda across that he promised his people. Mm -hmm. If you elect me as your city council president, I'll do this, I'll do that, and do the other. But um, strategically, it has been established to make sure he cannot achieve his agenda because it is important that we put back in place people who will front the agenda against the black and brown community. Mm -hmm. That's me talking. And, you know, you move on to the next resolution, um, which was the actual staff hiring, 0002. Okay. Uh, which... Trippy had introduced with his his picks for certain positions and titles and and so on. Mm -hmm. um, that was also opposed with a, a different uh, group of people to hire in. Um, I think the biggest was um, who Trippy had wanted to be his chief of staff and um, the legislative assistants versus who um, Chris Johnson put in for the position. Now, can I just say this to you? I hope, you, I know it may be a whole lot of comments and we don't have a show that you can call in, but I hope you're paying attention. It is designed for Trippy to fail. I think every person who's watching this need to call the city council office. And when you start seeing some of these people who are supporting, especially uh, places like the, the, uh, the, the, the um, third district, the poorest district in our city, I think we need to start making sure we show Trippy and others 
that, our, that we matter. When you say he can't even select his, he can be one of the ones to vote on it, but he can't select his chief of staff. He can't select the people around him to help him. In other words, whoever the seven say is what the seven get because mm-hmm. they roll strong together. Mm-hmm. They're the Cowboys, uh, not Dallas. So my question is, help me to understand. We, we talked about, you know, the, the setting agenda. We talked about the, the, the council um, um, uh, personnel piece. Uh, there was one more piece that I, wa- I think we needed to hit, too, before I show them the people who voted for this. Right. Um, so the, the next piece is the council pro temp. Um, the pro temp bar is the person who is second in command. Um, that's the person who steps in if the president cannot be at a meeting, um, if there's any illness, if the president is elevated to the, to the mayor slot, they would become the president. Mm-hmm. Um, so and, and we haven't seen the position really used a lot mm-hmm. um, here in the city Still of Wilmington. Um, but if you look at the city of Baltimore. Hold on, stop a minute, stop a minute, stop a minute. Hold it. We have not seen it used. Correct. And while I never wish ill on anyone, and I prayed for our mayor when he had a heart attack, mm-hmm. I prayed for him that God would spare him. But that shows you the heart beat away from yes. the next position. Correct. Trippy could have become the mayor of this city. Correct. So that position is key. Yes. And for, go ahead. And I use the example of Baltimore because I, it's just in recent memory yes. it's been used the most there. Um, you've had mayors who face corruption charges, um, mayors who've had to step down, and the council president has moved up. If you look at who the last two, um, how the last two mayors were in office, um, they be they were council president and they had to step in. Stephanie Rowland Blakes um, and then um, Byron Young. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you've had those situations happen um, a few times that you you. Um, have the the council president have to step up and then someone else's um, the the pro temp is then becomes the president um, so it, it's an important position um, and according to Trippy's um, or shall I say councilman Trippy's um, um, resolution he put forth a name yes who did he want as his um, pro temp so he has selected uh, councilwoman Michelle Harley from okay. the fourth district and who did the Johnson put up he selected Maria Cabrera okay. um, from at, from the at-large seat. Um, they have the same amount of time served. Mm-hmm. Maria has a, gra- a gap in her service. Um, she was on council for four years and then came back. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's in her fifth year. Um, Michelle Harley mm-hmm. was on council uh, for four, five straight years now. Mm-hmm. So they have the same amount of time. And usually the pro temp goes to someone who's served a while, Mm -hmm. who understands the rules, Mm -hmm. um, and and is there to be an added leader to Mm -hmm. the council. And they're both women. They both are um, black and brown women. So so I can understand how they played that game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, So, you know, both of them were both qualified for it. Don't get Mm -hmm. me wrong. Right. Um, It was just a difference of who the council president wanted. Um, and who the other side wanted. The other side, mm-hmm. to make sure the agenda is right. Correct. Uh, and to keep you from talking and getting exposed to what the, 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 there's one more item. Yes. And let's talk about that last item before we share those who voted for stripping Trippy of his power. Right. So this last item um, did not have a competing resolution. Okay. The council president chose not to pit his up um, and just say, all right, this is compromise. This is, we can work with this, right? Um, so the last portion was the committees, yeah. um, where uh, Councilman Johnson put up the committees, uh-huh. um, appointing Loretta Walsh, chair of public safety, um, also appointing himself the chair of finance, and then again, appointing who else is going to be on these committees. Um, so that was voted across the board. Um, but that was just the last portion. And those are usually the four main resolutions that you are going to see at the beginning of any council. Let's go back a little bit. Mm-hmm. We have a freshman, a freshman. Oh, so he was on council. He got appointed at the end uh, of the, the, the term prior um, because Councilman Bob Williams left. 
He's, but it was his first time being elected. Okay. Well, I'm going to still, being from an HBCU, say he was a freshman. <laughs> because until you have had gone through a cycle of, of, of the people saying, I want you, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're, you're not a veteran. You're not a sophomore, junior, or a senior, at mm -hmm. this, as far as I'm concerned. Well, a freshman came in representing a, ma a majority district, put forth such powerful um, um, legislation in the front of the, of the council and put at the top the two people, in my opinion, who's probably behind all of this. Himself, 7th District, and Loretta Walsh, who is at large. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to talk about that because many of you voted for her. She's in charge of public safety. And he's in charge of finance, which is the most powerful position. One of them, anyway. Yeah. Um, could you help me to know who are these seven individuals who um, voted for this cacophony? Yeah, so Councilwoman Oliver from the 3rd District. The poorest, the poorest district in our, um, yeah. in our city. Go ahead. Um, Councilwoman Brigida Fields from the 5th District. Uh -huh. Councilman Chris Johnson from the 7th. Uh -huh. Councilman Nathan Fields from the 8th. Councilwoman Loretta Walsh at large. Councilwoman Maria Cabrera at large. And Councilman James Padola at large. And Padola is the Republican, am I right? Yes, he represents the minority seat on the council. And he was able to easily get in because what one, one district was very clear. If we, if my district, I guess it's the 8th district or is it the 7th? Which one is the one? I think it's the 8th, right? If, eighth. if, if the 8th district carried the, the mayoral election, it carried everything because if you get the 8th district behind you, you win. And that's why I'm telling you all that we're telling you today because we want to make sure you understand there's a plan, mm -hmm. there's a plot, there's a scheme to make sure power stay in the right place. You will see again on your screen, Oliver, yes, African American. You will see Fields, 5th District. You will see Johnson, 7th District. You will see Field, again, it's two, one is with an S, Fields, another one is Field, from the 8th District. Maria, at large, Latino sister. You have Walsh, who've been there for a very, very long time, but really understand, it's almost like McConnell. I, I, she, she understands counsel very well. And then you have Spadato, and, all, and, he, and he's a Republican at large. All I wanna just keep saying to you is that this is the plan. These seven individuals, the ones carrying the city council. We cannot allow Trippy to be read wrong and misunderstood because these seven came together, but they didn't come together by themselves. This is an extension of the mayor, and I connect it for you. This is an extension from the mayor, and I want to make sure you saw these seven individuals because we're going to show you within the next couple of weeks the legislations that have been passed. If they get together and say it's going to be, so it will be. This is the power source, and we want to know why so much murders are happening in our city. We got people with the poorest districts representing because, of, listen, you can, be, you can be my color, but not my kind. And I think that's what's happening. And I was very quiet because I've been left out many times to die. But I am concerned about the welfare of Wilmington. And just like we were labeled as Murder USA or whatever else, what are we being labeled today? Nothing. Why? Because it's led by a person of a different color. Having black people around you doesn't make you non. Well, I'm going to be careful with that comment. We'll be right back. And we're back. Real quickly, I just want to say for the last segment, we talked about um, the silent storm and we, we're going to be giving you a whole lot of information and we're going to be doing it very slowly so that everybody can clearly understand what is going on in the city of Wilmington and where the power is and what the plays that are being made and how they're really trapping people and they're not able to deliver for their constituents. So I do want to apologize to Trippy. As I understand and got this information, it blew my mind. But Trippy, hold on. Help is on the way. 
it's going to be exposed and you will be reelected to be able to serve your people appropriately. But in the meantime, just hold on and, 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 and watch things start to change slowly. We got a few things we want to talk about, some follow up things, uh, Kobe. Let's talk about this whole infrastructure build back better because, man, I don't know whether I'm going to pull my hair out or what. Yeah, so uh, what's going on right now is um, in the House, they're still waiting to vote on a bill uh, or an infrastructure part until the Build Back Better gets done. Um, and that's the Progressive Caucus holding the line there, saying you got to stop cutting out what President Biden wants to do um, to the centrists. And um, Pramala Jayapal, she has been whipping um, her votes in her caucus, and she has about 30 members who are willing to hold the line no matter what. Um, and 10 of them, 10 to 15 of them said, um, we're, we're not budging at all. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at a real showdown in Congress. As this uh, show is being taped right now, President Biden is on his way mm -hmm. um, to Capitol Hill to meet with legislators yeah. um, and all the, in the two caucuses um, to push his agenda um, and what he wants to see and what he wants to make sure stays in um, that now it went down from the 3.5 trillion to the 1.75 trillion. Um, Mark. He said he's not going to change from the 1.5. Right. Um, so, you know, you got to keep pushing. Um, you know, Joe Manchin was actually in Delaware this past yeah. weekend yeah. Um, to meet with the president at his house with um, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to talk about where they can find some common ground on things. Um, and just talking about, you know, where the president sees it. And I broke the numbers down for everyone, and we could put it up on the screen. But I'm going to talk through what programs he really wants to see in there. So first is universal pre-K um, and preschool for all three and four year olds. Yeah. So expanding that access. Yeah. Um, affordable, um, high quality childcare is key yeah. to the success of our next generation, right? right. Education right. is a cornerstone of that. Um, and that's going to also help um, people who have disabilities as well, too. Um, get the resources they need. Children who have disabilities right. get the resources they need. Um, and also another key aspect, which has lifted a lot of people out of poverty, is expanding the child um, child tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a ton of friends who are, are receiving those checks right now mm -hmm. um, that are helping them pay bills, helping them get groceries, um, and be in a more comfortable situation in their own homes. So expanding that to less. Um, and that's for households earning up to 150000 a year. That's in a two-person household. Um, in investments in clean energy and combating climate change, you have um, the clean energy tax credit. Um, uh, $320 billion into that program for a 10-year expansion of that tax credit program. Um, resilience investments. Um, you have investment and incentives into clean energy technology and manufacturing um, and supply chain, right? Addressing supply chain demand. Um, and clean energy um, just overall is, is going to be our way out. Um, and, you know, everyone's talking about clean energy right now um, because it, everything that's going on. Then also you have the Affordable Care um, for millions, millions of hardworking people. So Affordable Care Act premium tax credits being expanded um, and allow Medicare to cover the cost of hearing, um, which is key to so many people as well too. Mm -hmm. Bringing down the cost and reducing um, the, the, in, the inflation um, pressures that have, have really put a burden on the middle class. Um, looking at how you can invest in housing, um, education beyond high school, right? Okay. So it, whether it's um, investing in HBCUs, investing in um, community yeah. colleges, mm -hmm. um, making sure people have access to higher education, um, and then also expanding um, the earned income tax credit um, for 17 million low-wage workers. Um, right now, California has an amazing program that deals with that. Um, but expanding that throughout the nation. Um, and just equity and in other investments. Um, making sure you're looking at communities who are usually on the front line of devastation, mm -hmm. um, looking at communities of color um, uh, and, and low income communities, right. um, and making sure that they're getting the proper investments. Now, to break it down, the, the um, and how we're going to break it down is we're going to show the policy on one side and how much uh, money is going into it, into the 1.7. Um, trillion dollar. So in child care and preschool, $400 billion wow. is going into that. 
in home care is $150 billion. In child tax and earned income tax credits, $200 billion. Wow. In clean energy and climate investments, $555 billion. Um, in Medicare hearing, $35 billion. In the ACA credits, um, including uncovered states, $130 billion. Um, in higher ed and workforce development, $40 billion. And in equity and in other investments into our communities, um, $90 billion to total um, $1.75 trillion. Right. Um, and then also the, the last part is that is they want to add on a, another $100 billion um, for true immigration reform. Mm. Um, and you, you've you seen um, the pictures from the border. You, you've seen how Haitian um, and, and black immigrants are being treated. You've seen how brown immigrants are being treated. Um, we have to have a more humane immigration system here in America. I agree. Um, so that's where they're at right now. Um, you should start seeing votes um, as early as Monday um, on on getting this ball rolling even more now that they have the 1.75 trillion number. Okay, I just hope that um, you know Mansion and Cinema will will certainly go along. It's a shame that we are held hostage by one or two individuals who, in one case with with Mansion, his state needs yes. uh, this, this infrastructure <laughs> yes. plan, but he's acting as if he doesn't. But that's what happens when you try to act like you're representing a people that you're really not representing. Mm -hmm. um, real quickly, because I know we are running out of time today, but Salad Storm is just so important to me, to us for our show. But tell me, what's on your mind today? You got several things that's there. Yeah, so, you know, one is President um, Obama is still very popular, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, he's been out on a road campaigning in, in Virginia and in, in New Jersey for those governor races. There's a ton of elections coming up. If you know someone in those states or in Pennsylvania, make sure you tell them to come out and vote November the 2nd, Tuesday, November yes. the 2nd. Two um, days. Right. So... President Obama took a moment to talk about young people mm -hmm. and how they're fighting for change. And he really zeroed in on the climate change. Mm -hmm. Right now in front of the White House, you have um, five young kids who are on a strike, or hunger strike. It's been almost two weeks now. Um, and they're calling for President Biden not to forget about them, not to forget about the next generation who is facing this climate crisis um, and that we need to invest money in it now. Um, and, and they're pitting pressure on that. But President um, Obama said what, what I'm so inspired by is the fact that you're not waiting for people who, um, who got you into this mess to dig us out. And even though you may not even be voting age, mm -hmm. which, you know, we've seen climate activists be as young as uh, 12 and 13 walk mm -hmm. out their mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. um, to, to address this issue, um, you're putting your foot down and saying this is on us as well, too. If we want to see the change, we have to be the ones who bring it about. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he said this in a video when he, he was uh, speaking at a conference. It was just so powerful um, because he's, he talks about how he interacts um, with the fellows at the Obama Foundation and, and just hearing from young people and seeing what they can do right now and seeing how these movements, um, whether it's for police reform, whether it's for criminal justice reform, voting rights, um, climate change, are all being led by young people right now. They're breaking out the mindset that we have to wait our turns because they feel the pressure of now. Mm. Um, so I think that was just a, a monumental um, speech um, and also it just gives energy to those who are fighting who at a young age just can have a toll on your mental health, um, on your body, um, and also it, it may feel as though you may not be winning. Um, so I, I did want to lift that up. And then also for um, what's going on, we've talked about January 6th, yes. we've talked about the insurrection. Um, so as they're going along with that special committee um, that Nancy Pelosi put together, and it's led um, by Benny Thompson down in Mississippi, um, he's also the Homeland Security uh, House Chair. They are interviewing and having um, the organizers testify and talking with them. And organizers are saying, no, this was not just us. We had conversations, we had planning meetings with dozens of members of Congress from the Republican side or their staff. 
and their staff was there in official capacity representing their member. Um, some of those members who, um, some of the biggest names are um, Margie Taylor Green, Lauren Bobart, um, Paul Gass Gassar from Arizona, and their staff. Um, the, you have people like that who are giving away secrets because you want to know how do you find the majority whip's office? Not his office that you see in the press, but his real office, his secret office. They walked right to it, didn't mm -hmm. get lost. And the tunnels underneath the Capitol is, uh, is truly confusing. I mean, it's all different types of way, tight areas. They walked straight to his office. Mm -hmm. um, so you had classified information being leaked to these people who were going into the building looking to harm each other or looking to harm yeah. others. Mm -hmm. um, and you had um, members of Congress who were supposed to support each other, even though they may disagree on policy, okay. made this personal. Yeah. Um, and I truly believe mm -hmm. that anyone who had a part in what happened on January 6th mm -hmm. should, one, be expelled from the Congress mm -hmm. and then should be um, arrested and charged with insurrection. And that's why they don't want to really share uh, what is happening and what is going on with, um, like, certain ones don't want, they, they, they don't want to respond to the subpoenas because it's, it's much bigger than just those who showed up. Correct. Yep. And it's the hidden stuff that's, that, that the people who supported it, made it happen. I'm really shocked to hear Facebook had a role in it, too. Yeah. I was really shocked when I heard that information as we were doing research on various things and, and to find out that, that people were putting together um, parties to, to be at a certain place mm -hmm. and giving out the information. But you know, uh, Kobe, um, January 6th will be a mark on our history for a very, very long time. And we knew how dangerous Trump could be, but I want to tie it back to our city. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening is they lost one of their key people in the city council office, mm -hmm. and now they came up with a scheme to make sure he has no power so there'll be no confidence in him so that maybe he'll just quit. I hope Trippy doesn't never quit. I hope he stands stronger now that it can be out. He's, he's a very humble guy. And, and I've known him for, for, for the 17 years I've been here and, and, his, and his dad as well and, and others. And, and, and Trippy have always been the same way. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm really shocked as we've done our research right. to see what they did to him. So when you look at January 6th with the insurrection, no, we didn't have that here in Wilmington. But what we really have is, is, is people who have, who have come together and say, listen, we're going to be the power. We're going to stick together. And they cannot do it by themselves. They have to have some of us who mm -hmm. look like us to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And while there are people in town will say, Pastor Curry, please don't say nothing about this particular council person because this person is connected to this person. I really, which, which camera is looking at me? This one. I really don't care. My people matter to me. If you are representing a district with my people, my job is to expose when you are not doing what it needs to be done. Ms. Congo, Trippy Congo have been a very stellar person in this community. And it's, uh, we apologize that your person did not win. But what we will not do is we will not make him look like he's incompetent and, and, and don't know what he's doing because you have stripped him of everything that he has. We'll be, no, before we go right back, I, I might as well just go ahead and close out the show now because it was so much information that yeah. we shared, Kobe. <laughs> and I'll allow you to share whatever else is on your mind. You can certainly do it at this time and then we're going to call it quits. Yeah, no, so I don't have too much more on my mind. Again, if you know people in those three states I said, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Virginia, tell them to get out. Tell them to vote for the Democrats because all the opposing Republicans on the statewide ballots um, are being endorsed by Trump. They believe in that Trump is still the president and Biden is not. And we cannot allow those people to get in positions of power. Now, in Pennsylvania, those are for courtships and judgeships, mm -hmm. um, the Supreme Court and the, the Superior Court, which can overturn elections. Mm -hmm. um, and then also in Virginia um, and in New Jersey, it's the governorships and the lieutenant lieutenant governorship. So yeah. please get out and vote um, or please call your friends and, and family that live there. Thank you. And Kobe, thank you for what you do for us. You help us to bring some things into context and I want to always make sure that I honor that. People will have silent, they tried to silence you, but look at how God brought us together so that you can have a platform to share truth. 
Yes. If by some chance you're watching us today and you feel that we have, have we have come in error, we've made some mistakes, you are free to come and defend any position you want. The space here is available. Um, we we have we we we, we record pre-record only because we have to. We would rather do a live show, mm -hmm. but for this case, we want you to be able to come and we want you to share. Don't talk on the streets. Talk to us because we're going to keep reporting. We're going to keep reporting, and I promised you. I'm going to call the News Journal and find out who is in charge, uh, and I know, and I'm going to ask them to come on. I want the right coverage for us, and the people who got people in their pockets, we want them taken out so that their appropriate coverage is happening. This is, Do this is Dr. Curry. This is Kobe Owens. And listen, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. Take care, y'all.